This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we're dealing with the Mila dishwasher that is overfilling. So the water valve is stuck open. And here's a new water valve we're going to put on. Here's the part number. And this one only costs about $40. You can see the intake drain light is blinking. And every time we start it, we can hear it just constantly draining. So that tells us that the drip pan underneath is full of water. And this is due to the intake valve not closing all the way. So it's staying a little bit open. And even when the dishwasher's turned off, water's building up inside and then it leaks into the drip pan. So to cure it, we have to put in a new fill valve. Here's what, the, here's what they look like. These are just, again, about 40 bucks. You can get them at Amazon, kind of a generic type of fill valve. We also need a little brass elbow that fits in there. That helps it connect to the uh, water supply from the house. But uh, yeah, these fill valves, the Mila ones just kind of stick after a while. So first thing, we'll unplug it. Make sure we got the power off and we want to turn the water supply off too. So that'll be found underneath the sink. Go lefty loosey. Sometimes you just turn it 90 degrees to turn them off and sometimes you have to spin the knob maybe four or five times. Make sure it's fully closed. So I used a wrench to loosen up this water hose. Now I'm just using finger strength to spin it off. And this is what the Mila intake valve looks like. If you buy one from Mila to replace it, they come come for about anywhere between 160 and 240. I'm just pulling this out a little bit so I can get it easier time to work with it. And I'm gonna try to shake all the water out of this hose into a little bowl, just so there's less of a mess when we start digging into it. So make sure it's unplugged. You can use a standard head screwdriver to pry the case open. Sometimes there's a Phillips head screw holding the case together that you have to remove depending on the model. This one just pries off. And there's our intake valve. And it has a little outer tube that I want to keep away while I do the procedure. So I'm going to use a pair of vice grips to kind of hold that outer tube back. I want to expose about a foot worth of tube. I use a standard head screwdriver to just push the power wires to the intake valve up a little bit so I can cut them with my diagonal pliers, or you could use a pair of scissors. Yeah, make sure the power is off. And the next thing I want to do is try to remove the hose from the old fill valve. So I'm going to use some pliers to press in on the spring clamp and pull that back out of the way. And then I'll pull off the old one. I'm going to be cutting this blue tube. I'm going to cut it about maybe eight inches back. And I'm using diagonal pliers again. You could use a razor blade to cut it. And I put some Teflon tape on the little brass elbow and threaded that into the fill valve. Just finger tension, but then use a wrench. I usually use like a crescent wrench to turn it a few more turns to get it super tight. And I'm just going to put the valve on to the tube and then I'm going to use the pliers to get the spring hose clamp back on so everything's tight. And then we have to just um, take the power cord and separate it, strip back about a quarter inch of the insulation to expose the wire. We twist the wire we put on spade connectors. You can get those like at a electronic store or even our um, auto parts store. And then you crimp them on. And those will be the power supply to the valve. And they just go right on to the valve. And you're all set. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.